his member, his penis, can push out an egg. What? <laughs> Girl. <laughs> oh, hell. No. I was like, what the hell am I reading? But I couldn't stop reading. Welcome to another episode of Romance of the Monsters. I'm M. Hi, I'm S. I'm Seth. And this week, we are doing something different because <laughs> we cannot get ourselves organized. We cannot figure out what to read. So we, we thought we would start something new on the podcast, which is essentially just a chit-chatty episode where we share things that we're loving right now, whether it's TV shows or movies, books, whatever it may be. Um, so hopefully you like it. We're not sure what the format will be. <laughs> We've never done this before. And to be honest, we're not prepared at all. So what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> so how do we go about this? Who starts? Who wants to start? Well, I mean, I think it's time you start with your solo. Um, time for you to start singing. I can be back of vocals. So Em has had the Backstreet Boys stuck in her head this whole day, and all yeah. I've been hearing is her singing for like the past I don't Badly. know half hour. <laughs> like the worst, the worst singing I can possibly do. I'm not going to sing on the phone. No, I'm <laughs> imagine she starts singing and then and it just becomes like more. It's a good thing I'm the one editing these. <laughs> Because for sure, if I was to sing, you guys would put it in and, like, embarrass me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> All right. But seriously, who wants to go first? How many How many things do you guys have on your list? You said not to prepare, so I had nothing prepared. I mean, I made a list. <laughs> Did you guys not even make a list? <laughs> you said don't prepare, <laughs> so I literally did not. Girl, I made a, I, I'm prepared. <laughs> I have to. If not, I blank out and I forget everything. So. <laughs> well, as you guys are talking, I'll be making a list. <laughs> As has got, like, a whole page of notes. <laughs> uh... All right. I'll go first, then, if you insist. <laughs> okay. So, one thing I've been absolutely obsessed with recently, and it's, like, a major surprise for me, and it's the Alpha Omega series by Patricia Briggs. I never thought I would even like these books because it's like sort of investigations of like murders and also, you know, there's this series of Patricia Briggs has romance at its core, but like it's not smutty in any way. So I was like, oh, I'm, like, I just don't think it's for me. But oh my God, guys, guys. <laughs> I have fallen in love with these characters so hard. Yeah. The narrator for, like, the audiobooks for the series are chef's kiss. Just freaking amazing. The guy, like, I, I swear to God, like, I read the first book and I was like, nah. like, I don't know. But then, like, three days went by and I was like, I'm still thinking about it. You know what I mean? Like, when you think, like, a book hasn't oh, really yeah. left an impression on you, but then you think about it and you're like, mm kind of missed the characters so then I went back and I read book two well listened to book two and I was like fuck this is so good I fucking love Charles and Anna so okay premise of the story short a short one um it's wolf shifters um uh, Anna is an omega which is pretty rare in this world um and Charles is an like a dominant he's not alpha he's dominant um do alphas exist? They do. They do. Like, the pack structure, if you will, kind of, uh, if you've read, um, oh, what's her name? Susan Susan Wright's... Yeah. Uh, Feral her, her, her shifter books, like her werewolf yeah. books. The, the pack structure is kind of like that in a lot of ways. Anyways, so 
she's Omega. Omega in this world are essentially all it means is that they can calm others, like they have a calming presence, and they are not uh, impacted by alpha orders. Like in a, like everyone else, if an al- if an alpha says something, like they have to do it. Like it's like in their nature to just obey, but a- Omegas don't have to do that. So anyway, it's just. <laughs> Good. I just I don't even know how to explain it guys because it changes every book like there's always a new investigation like book two had like this really cool Arthur storyline with like what's her name Guinevere or whatever and Guinevere, Guinevere and um, Lancelot and it was just <laughs> just read it <laughs> <laughs> how many books are in the series yeah I well I mean for now for now, there's five that are out, and then plus a prequel novella, which, by the way, definitely start with a prequel novella. I did not, and then I was like very lost, very very lost, and then I went back, listened to that one, and was like, everything makes sense now. Um, so yeah, five are out, and then one of like the sixth one is coming out in March of next year. So I don't oh, know okay. if beyond that there will be other books, but. Girl, I am crossing my fingers because I don't want to let this series go. <laughs> and so it follows the same couple throughout all five books, it right? It does. Yeah. It does. And like, so do they solve mysteries and then they also have like their own problems like within their relationship? Okay. Yeah. So one thing. So yeah, they together, they sort of um, solve mysteries. And then on top of that, they have this relationship, which at first I was like, how do you keep a relationship interesting for six plus books you know what I mean like that's what I find hard to like I don't know but one thing I find really interesting that Patricia Briggs is doing in the Patricia Briggs is doing in these these books is that she sort of shows the difference between love and intimacy and in the sense Mm -hmm. that because they're mates Charles and Anna are mates there's love between them. Like, being someone's mate means you love them, period. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you have sexual desire for that person because they're your mates. And, you know, it's the animal slash also human part of yourself that's just you have desires. But she explores intimacy in, like, a really interesting way because intimacy is not actually easy to them love is easy they love each other but intimacy it's like something that has to grow and that they have to get comfortable with and like they have to get to know each other because it's kind of like suddenly you know you're living your life and then suddenly someone is thrust into it and like is your mate and you know now you have to have this person in your life forever like that's kind of intense and Anna, um, part of, like, her story is that she was in a pack that was really, really um, violent and abusive of her, sexually oh, no. abusive also. So she kind of has to um, overcome that and, and with Charles. And so I just I think she's doing something really interesting with intimacy that I've honestly not seen in books that often of just how mm-hmm. love and intimacy don't necessarily go together for some people. Yeah, okay, that sounds interesting. I think I might even, I might check out the first book. That sounds, yeah. But I don't know how they would read. That's the, that's my one thing is like, if I, if I had read the books, I feel like I would feel differently about them. Like the audiobooks are just so much better. Like some audiobooks can really like make the experience bad some of them just kind of don't change your experience either way but some audiobooks like in this case it actually enhances the experience like the way he portrays the character especially Charles like his voice for Charles I'm just like (laughs) 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 like it's just so calm and like he never puts too much force into it but because that's just how he is like it's just his I, I just I don't know how to explain that. I just fucking love it. I love when like narrators are such good actors and yeah. like they understand the characters. Yeah. It makes all the difference, I think. Like like the guy that does the Immortals After Dark series, um Pat uh, what's his name? Robert, Robert Petkoff. Petkoff. He's yeah. good. But I think I prefer this guy. I think really? his name is what's Ooh. his name? Something like um I don't know what his name is, but he's freaking <laughs> awesome. 
like so great so much so that I went and I like I checked which other books he had done and like barely nothing so I was like oh <laughs> why <laughs> you're so good though <laughs> so but yeah. like Patricia B- Briggs ha- oh my gosh I can't say her name Patricia Briggs yeah. she has um a lot of other books out as well she has the Is Mercy she? Thompson series yeah yeah is which... that the same narrator no it's a oh. woman for those books mm. i'm 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 willing to try them if only because i'm like what the what do i do in my life when i'm done with these books <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like the mercy thompson books there's like 12 that are out so i'm like i might try oh, out, but okay. i also know there's a lot less romance in those books and like you have to oh. let it simmer for like four if not five books until anything happens type thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so is it a bit of a uh, slow burn, do you think? Their the Mercy Thompson ones? No, the ones that you're reading right now. Oh, no. I wouldn't call it slow burn. No, mm. because they're mates. And, like, in this world, it's not like Immortals After Dark. Where it's like, oh, we're mates, but, like, I actually still hate you. So, like, I don't yeah. want you in my life. It's really not like that. It's like, oh, well, we're mates. So, like, we're moving in together, like, tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like, it's that's kind of how it is and like love is very fast and they get married like by the end of book one they're married and I was really confused by that because I was like well where do we go from here especially because yeah. um, female werewolves can't have kids so I'm like I mean people don't have to have kids in books but I'm like we have six books to go so like what is going to happen what's the conflict yeah exactly so I was really really pleased with book two when I opened it and it was clear that they still had stuff to work through because I was like okay yeah that's like something like I'm not someone that likes to read books or series that follow the same couple throughout numerous stories yeah. like one I get bored and two like I want to see something else yeah um so like I don't know like I feel like there's some books where like some series that I could do it like for example like you know A Court of Thorns and Roses like that yeah. series for sure I can follow the same couple um throne of glass again i for sure i can follow that couple but i just feel like some like some books i just feel like they don't create enough conflict for them to have numerous yeah. books in a series yeah so i'm on to book four what already wow yeah well i mean i don't want to read it because <laughs> that means i only have one left afterwards but yeah yeah <sighs> but know. you read the novella already as well Yes, so technically oh, okay. I've read four books, plus a short story about, like, side characters that I really liked, so. Okay. I'm in, guys. I'm in. I'm a Patricia Briggs fan now. Which, 2020 is honestly, like, a, a weird <laughs> reading year for me. I'm, like, trying things that I've never tried before, trying authors that I never thought I'd try. It's just, I'm loving yeah, it, no. you know what I mean? You grow. <laughs> no, for sure, and I feel like when I was having um my slump before the podcast um I was reading random books that I obviously would have never read beforehand Mm -hmm. um and yeah and I feel like you just have to get out of your comfort zone sometimes to find a book that you like and even to get back into reading and yeah yeah that's true you know tentacle porn was my my thing in (laughs) okay (laughs) um so all right S what's on your list okay on my list is I actually finished it earlier this week. Um, it's the Wolf Hotel series by K.A. Tucker. Oh, the the one in Alaska? No, this is... So this series, she actually wrote it under a different name. Oh. Um, it was... Uh, the name was Nina West. I don't know if oh. you guys heard. Yeah, so Wait, she was writing I've under a different... that name. That's her? That's her, yeah. Was that known or is that like... She made it known earlier this year, maybe like... Or during the summer. Because I feel like like Nina West is a name I've seen for a while. Like, years. Probably. Because she has two series. Unless I'm, like, confusing her with another... Oh, wow. Okay. So, what is it about? Okay, so this one is about this girl that uh, she finds out that her fiancé is cheating on her. And... um, asshole yeah he uses the excuse <laughs> that they, yeah they, he uses the excuse that they've known each other for a long time and that he's always gonna love her but you know she's a virgin they haven't really done anything so he needs excuse to excuse me yeah yeah the typical 
preacher's son. He's a preacher's Piece son. Piece of shit is what he fucking is. preacher. You, when the guy is a preacher's <laughs> son, you know he's fucked up in the head. Yeah, he's like sleeping around. Yes, <laughs> yes. you know. <laughs> So he's just basically telling the girl to like wait for him that he needs he's a man he needs to you know fuck around a little bit before they get married and then Asshole. yeah so she wow. just she applies to a job um in Alaska to work at a hotel so she applies she gets the job and she ends up moving there for like I think the I think it's during the summertime and she gets there she i think it's on the first night she gets drunk with her roommates and then she ends up running into the hotel the hotel's owner and then that's when it's you know something starts and he and ends he's up, a love interest he's a love interest you know it's a typical <laughs> Ooh, okay i need this is it yeah. funny is he rich he's rich he <laughs> i love the two <laughs> questions is he rich or rich. is it funny <laughs> <laughs> it's yes and it's a little bit I, I like it so much because I feel like it's a little bit different from her other series like okay. her other contemporaries and um it's much more smuttier um Ooh. she goes through kind of like a where she finds herself like sexually because she knows she's she's a virgin she's mm. from a small town she yeah her parents her parents are really religious and so she kind of breaks she moves and she breaks that you know that mold mm-hmm. um it's really good like really good i was surprised um i listened to the audiobooks this was a series that i started on scribe and they ended up taking the last book oh yeah we have a bone to pick with scribed <laughs> yes <laughs> we do they keep do. taking books away <laughs> It right away. I I had just finished reading. It's four books. I had just finished reading the third one, and I had planned to start it like right away. But I was like, oh, yeah. start it in the morning. I go on. I go Little on the app. Did and it's, you know? It's not there. You would anymore. not be starting it in the morning. <laughs> Overnight, they went. Nope. Nope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um so. So I was like, okay, I'll wait until, you know, November to start the the next book. You know, no big deal. Yeah. But I couldn't, like, I kept, you know, I kept thinking about the characters. Yeah. Like, you know, I wanted to finish the series. So I'm not saying <laughs> I did this, you know, because I didn't do it. But I didn't start a new subscription on Scribe using a different email um, to finish the series. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't do that. Of course not. I would never do that. But... <laughs> But I finished the series Never. Uh, earlier this week, and it was mwah, amazing. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, I recommend it. How many it's books really are good. in that series? There's four. I okay. Think. Yeah, there's I four. have never read a K.A. Tucker book. No, never? never? I haven't either. No? No. She was, she, she was huge back in the day. Yeah, yes. I mean she still she is. was. It's just like yeah. I feel like back in the day she was one of the bigger names. She, yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, so I feel like yeah, yeah. I definitely give her um the simple wild. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Series. That's oh, the series. Oh yes. was that one's of. been on my list. Yeah, oh, I love that. I love that series so much. But isn't recommend. that in Alaska too? It takes place in Alaska. What, yeah. what is her thing with Alaska? I don't know. She <laughs> loves Alaska. Does she live in Alaska? She's Canadian. No, no, like, yeah, oh. she's been writing about yeah. Alaska. <laughs> yeah, she's Canadian. Um, oh my God. Yeah, I love Alaska. She makes, I love it. That's I mean, really, give I'm it sure a try. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, whenever I think of Alaska, all I think about is like the proposal. The proposal. Oh. Which is that, that one? That movie is so good. I know. I, I haven't seen it in so long. With Ryan but Reynolds. Isn't that and... like he's Canadian? Like he's Canadian. No, she's Canadian. He's American. They have to yeah. marry. But like technically, yeah. isn't it him that's Canadian in real life? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I think so. So anyway. Ugh, that's a good movie. That's a great movie. That, I love that, that really movie. It's movie. such a good enemies to lovers. Uh-huh. I just... I. <laughs> Just, I always have this scene in mind of like when she gets out of the of the shower. And oh yeah! And he comes in, and then they're like, "Bam!" <laughs> they're like, "You're naked! You're naked!" <laughs> uh, oh, I want to watch it now. I'm gonna see if it's me on too. <laughs> Such so a good, good movie. Go, Seth. Tell us. All right. Well, for me, my last read that actually ended up being like really, really, really good. 
um, was Always Only You by Chloe Gleiss. I think that's how you say her name. So basically, it's book two in the Bergman Brothers series. So basically, um, the series is about um, a family of Swiss people, I believe. I think they're all Swiss. Um, anyways, so this book takes place... It's contemporary. And I haven't read a contemporary in so long. Girl, I don't even dude. remember the last time I've read a contemporary. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so basically... Um, he is a hockey player, and um, <clears throat> the girl is, like, their social media manager. So she's, like, in charge of posting things on their social media and, like, policing what they post on their own social media. Um, so basically, she is off limits because she is, you know, part of the, the team, but you can't really date a player when you're on the team. <clears throat> and anyways, so what happens is um, he's like, apparently been harboring a crush for her for the past three years, like since she started working. And our boy, Ren, is a very shy, like blushing virgin, basically. His name is Ren. I His name love is Ren. That name. I don't know why. <laughs> love that. I mean, I think we know why, but. Why? Kylo Ren. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> How did I not even think about that? Oh my god. No, I was thinking of Ren from A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. Oh, sure. Um, is it R-H-E-N? No, it's R-E-N. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's Ren either way, but mm -hmm. love that Okay. <laughs> For obvious reasons now <laughs> that I've been forgotten. <laughs> How do you forget? I guess, like, subconsciously... Girl subconsciously yeah. i was putting an h there so i was oh, okay that's okay, why okay. i wasn't thinking of kyle ren but you're okay I mean, he's my main bag we all know that <laughs> he's our main thing okay excuse me <laughs> sorry what i said excuse me <laughs> <laughs> hey we've like already talked about how we share custody so do not we are not fighting on this episode i feel like we managed to mention him so often <laughs> In the episodes, it's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> we'll just start talking about him out of nowhere, like, or, or the sequel trilogy or whatever, or Raylo. <laughs> and I'm like, why are we talking about Raylo right now? <laughs> when are we not talking about Raylo? Let's be honest. I mean... uh. <laughs> continue, girls. Continue. Yeah. I know. I got off track because of the name I was Red. like, shut up. I don't want to hear about I it. I get it. I get <laughs> it. Hater. <laughs> We'll, we'll make you watch The Last Jedi. We will make it oh, happen. she has. I think I have. What, what did I watch, Marge? I watched something. That is a story for another day because I am, I get mad <laughs> just thinking about it, about what she did. I know. That gets me mad too. But whenever we meet us, I'm sitting you down. <laughs> and what we're doing, and we're watching The Last Jedi. It's going to be the first time I'll watch Star Wars after like how many years, but Rousing. I'll do it. Just, you. just make sure you guys have some nachos for me yeah of course <laughs> i'll order it from the theater and everything i feel like we have to tell the story now we'll okay get back fine to your book in five <laughs> seconds so s s is like a major hater of star wars she no no it. not a hater she's not a, a hater, hater. yeah i just don't okay, care well, for it she didn't want to watch them probably because me and saf were so into it anyways and then, so I'm trying to force her to watch the goddamn movie. She's like, mm -hmm. no, leaving the chat, whatever. And then out of nowhere one day, she's like, oh, by the way, I watched, like, the third one in, like, in theater because her sister had promised nachos. And I'm like, <laughs> first of all, it's nachos. You watched the third one, which is the worst the one. one. Like, but no, she hasn't seen any of the previous one. I was like, besides myself. No, 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 no. Listen, I felt like I I watched these movies because I hear you guys talk about them all the time. So I know what was going on. No, that's not the same. No, you did not. And then no, she went I, I back and it. watched the Last Jedi, and then she only half she she only watched like half of it, I think. Yeah. Which is like. Blast. The amount of times I'm <laughs> contemplating ending our friendship, us, it's actually crazy absolutely blasphemous like you cannot watch half of the last jedi and then watch the entirety of the rise of skywalker and and us nachos friends nachos 
Because, like, I feel like the good Raylo scenes don't even happen in the first half of The Last Jedi. I mean, like, they do, but, like, the buildup is so good. And how do you not watch the rest of the movie? is the nachos. Like, she doesn't remember the movie. (laughs) 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 No, I probably don't. (laughs) Anyways, back to your book. Okay, well, now I just feel like it's not as exciting. (laughs) No, go, go, go. (laughs) I want to hear about this. I want to hear about your book. Uh, anyways, back to Always Only You. Um, so basically, Ren, as I said, is like the blushing virgin boy um, who also happens to be a ginger. Oh, and he's ginger. like the cutest They're so guy rare, ever. But so yeah. precious. Yeah. I know. It's like a unicorn. I know. That and, a, and like a ginger hero or a blonde hero, you yeah. never see them. Ever. Really? So, what, oh, girl, blondes, rare. Yeah, I feel like that's rare. They're rare. Hmm. But they're just so fine. Why are they not more present? Like, I get it. You like the tall, dark, and dangerous type. I do, too. But, like, blondes. Like, Sebastian said Vincent is blonde. He's, like, the exception, I think, for me. I don't, I'm not really a fan of blonde heroes. No? Like, I feel like anytime I come across them, like, they're not usually my favorite for some reason. I don't know if it's, like, their character or, like, what. But, like, I always tend to go to, like, the tortured, darker characters. And those happen to be darker-haired people. Lothair. Oh, shut up. Is he blonde? Is he blonde? Is he blonde? She probably imagines him dark-haired, right? No, maybe in my head I did. But, no, he's (laughs) white-haired. He Rowan, ain't blonde. He's Rowan white hair. Not your favorite. The Rowan has gray hair. We love we love a silver fox. Yes. Oh, I love yeah. His hair is silver. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Hold on. Wrote about uh, War- uh Warner, the Shatter Me series. Do you blonde, like that? But she hasn't read those books. I only read the first one. Girl. Okay. Okay. Now the judgment's coming on me. Now. Just okay. Guess. We'll talk about it after you tell us about your book. I just feel like this book now, like, am I even talking about it anymore? <laughs> I promise not to cut you off again. No more. We're silent. I'm, I'm muting myself. <laughs> Go. Uh, okay, fine. So basically, yes, blushing virgin redhead. And then we have Frankie, who's like this insanely badass woman. Like, she's so great. Um, she also has autism. And she also has early arthritis. And, like, it's just such an interesting combination. Like, I just thought it was really interesting that, like, the author decided to include both of them and, like, make Frankie, like, such a great character. And, like, I love that she walked around with, like, a glass cane. Like, she was just so cool. Yes. I love that. Yeah, she was awesome. And, like, her character was just so great. And, like, Ren's love for her, like, oh, it was so beautiful to read about. And, like, she struggled with the idea of, like, always being, like, pitied and like she never wanted that from her man and like it was just the way it was written was just so well done and like Ren was such a great character I've already said that but like he was like I don't usually go for the soft boy type and I think we've already talked about that but like he was like the right he was like supportive and like great and funny but he also like had like a bit of an edge where like you know he had like the alpha energy but still uh, was a sweet boy. So, like, he's a beta. <laughs> okay, fine, yeah. He's a beta. <laughs> but, yeah, it was, a, it was a good read. And it was actually even funny, too. Like, there were so many scenes where, like, I was laughing so hard that I had to put my, my phone down because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It was so funny. But, yeah, it was a good read. If you're Is into, that a like, debut author? Um, I think her first book was actually the first one in the series. So okay. it's her second one. And you book. said this one is the second one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've never so I'm heard curious about the before. third one because it's like the the eldest sister and like her husband was a professor in the first book. And like in this book, it seems like they're having issues within their marriage. So the third book is them trying to fix it. So I'm curious to see what she does with them and like what their big issue was. So I added that book. I added that book that you read on my Goodreads. So. Yeah, no, it's really good. I really liked it. Highly recommend. You don't really necessarily need to read the first one. S adding books to her TBR is sacred. It (laughs) means a lot when she does. (laughs) Not like you. You have like over 50,000 books on your own. My TBR is nothing close to sacred. It's just a (laughs) dump of trash fire 
just <laughs> absolute chaos. And You'll probably get to all of them. I think at least, you know. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Um, you know, um, in your afterlife. Plus, I I add too many like every week, so forget about it. And then the mood strikes me, and I'm like. Oh, I feel like reading that book that's really not on my TBR right now. Yeah. Like, you dumbass, you're <laughs> reading books that aren't on your TBR. How is that helpful? Yeah, she's my she... TBR is at, as of today, right now, the second uh, 4,238 books. Wow. Damn. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> what is mine? Let me check. Yours is so precious. It's like 600. I, I want to I get mine to lower than 1,000. I tried taking off books that I know I won't be My want in. to read, actually, both of you, is 793, okay? <laughs> That's so, <laughs> so little. Mine's 1,000. 1,387. Oh, that's not oh bad. God. That's not bad. It's just mine that's off the rails it's just <laughs> it's okay I feel like it's the books that you add that you're like "Ooh, I'm kind of interested I'll just add it because I want to remember what it is yeah okay so how I see it is not it's not books that I want to read necessarily it's book books that I, I read the blur and blurb and I go "Ooh, that's interesting and so I add it so that I can always find it again because if I don't, how the freak am I supposed to remember it? You know what I mean? So yeah, I kind of see no, it as, I, like, that. I think that's a valid reason. Thanks. For justifying <laughs> well, like, my because I'm the book uh, police, horrible right? tendencies. <laughs> 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 Anyways, the next thing on my list, which is not technically something I have seen yet, but it's the Bridgertons. I'm really oh, excited yeah. about the Bridgertons TV show. Yes. I was, like, my excitement for the TV show was maybe, like, a 50 out of 100, like, kind of, you know, excited but not too excited. And then those images came out, and, I mean, as as we're recording this, there's no trailer yet, so maybe by the time this comes out, there will be. Um, but, like, just like that, my excitement went from 50 to, like, 200 out of 100, so... Mm-hmm. I know I want to reread the first book. I want to like do all the things. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, I'm excited too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really excited for it as well. Like, I'm not someone you know. I'm not really a fan yeah. of Julia Quinn. Book one, I really didn't like. Book two, I think I liked it, but I wasn't like obsessed with it. Um, but I'm excited for the series because one, it's historical romance, and two, it's historical romance. Like, it's not I even know. like it's. Like, just historical, like, for example, like, Jane Austen or yeah. just, you know, something that's historical. This is actually, like, romance, but set in a historical setting. And it's actually and so by someone legit and a company that's legit. Like, I feel like romance, like, too often times it's, it's a random company that acquires the rights. Mm -hmm. And you just know they're going to mess it up. It's going to be, like, cheesy as fuck with bad actors and such. Yeah. But this is actually Netflix, and it's actually Shonda Rhimes. Like, the hell? <laughs> like, uh, it's Shonda freaking Rhimes. Like, we actually have a chance of, like, showing the world what romance can actually be. Yeah. With, like, good actors and great costumes. Like, the costumes are oh, fucking insane. Oh, the costumes insane. are beautiful. I know. And I'm so... excited. And Simon is fun. Hot. He is so hot. And, like, I was... Okay. He's freaking hot that there's no deny denying that but i do think he's a little short so i was a little worried about that oh. but i saw See, pictures I, look at I saw pictures and she must be like actually really tiny because the height difference between them is just perfect so i was like all is right in the world again <laughs> what was his height do you remember i think he's like maybe five eight or something oh I, I could be completely wrong about that, but I do feel like I checked, like I checked online at one point because I was like, "This is important, important information, <laughs> crucial." <laughs> so, I'm really excited for that, and I think we are planning to watch the series and then have like an episode on the TV series, well, the first season, um, at one point. Hopefully, we can like watch it really quickly, like. Mm -hmm. Oh, Binge girl, it's, on, it's releasing Christmas Day. Don't think I'm yeah. not watching it Christmas Day. 
well, I'll do the 26th. <laughs> yeah. And then I can, like, edit that episode, like, extra fast and then put it out, like, right away. Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, that would be so great. I just, yeah. like, I'm really excited, but how many episodes? It's eight episodes, right? Eight episodes. Okay. So I'm guessing, good like, an hour okay. each. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, hello, I watch Turkish shows, they're two and a half hours, like, I, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> <laughs> like I can do an hour yeah. per episode. Yeah. That's like only four episodes, maybe three episodes of a Turkish show. I got mm. this. Um I actually started a show called The Queen's Gambit. Gambit? I think that's what it's I think I've heard of that. It's a mini series on Netflix. It just came out. Um and it's about this female cha- chase <laughs> a female chess prodigy um yes i saw that it's yeah. with the girl from emma right yes 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 her yeah and um so it's about a the girl she was or she was an orphan very young um and then throughout her childhood she was at an orphanage um and she meets she befriends a janitor and the janitor starts to teach her how to play chess and she picks up the game like really quick um, and she just becomes this prodigy. So it's kind of like a coming of age story. Um, she deals with the death of like her her parents. Um, she kind of struggles with an addiction. Uh, she kind of has like a pill, a pill addiction. Um, she ends up getting adopted and the lady that becomes her mom um, kind of takes her under her wing when she finds out that she's really good at chess <clears throat> signs her up for a bunch of things and takes her around the world for her to compete and like she becomes like this huge thing um i'm barely halfway into the show but it's really good really yeah. so how yeah. many episodes is it if it's a I mini series i think it's probably seven or eight okay uh, yeah um and it's actually a book too it's oh. by um oh. walter yeah, I feel like the title Walter is really Tempest. familiar, even before I saw it on um, Netflix. Um, actually, S and I started it together, Tale of the Nine-Tailed. It's a Korean drama. You guys um, We only watched it? one episode so far, but I've been yeah. dying to watch another one. Yeah. Um, it's actually pretty good. Nice. Um, so basically, let me give you a quick little synopsis if people don't really know what it's about. Um, so it's about this guy who isn't really just a human. He's um, something called... Um, a nine-tailed fox. Um, so he's a mythical creature. Um, and he apparently was in love with this woman. And apparently these nine-tailed foxes only fall in love once. And um, so he did. And then she so happened to have died. We don't know how or why or what happened. Um, but she died. And so in order for her, because he can't live without her. So he decided to... Um, wait for her to get reincarnated and during that time he had to like be a servant to I guess the afterlife or like the people that run the afterlife and um his job is to like I guess destroy or kill other nine-tailed foxes that have been like wreaking havoc on humans um and then the show basically starts off with him probably we don't know for sure yet if she's his lover reincarnated but it starts off with her and him saving her as a child and then it flashes forward to present day and we see them interact again. But he's more or less like unfazed by like life now. He's just been a servant to the afterlife for so long. So basically, yeah, he uh, is unfazed by like life going on. And he more or less kind of gave up on finding her. And he's ready to just give up his servitude. But then we know that he's probably found her. So... Yeah, I think it's pretty good. And it reminds me a lot of Twilight. <laughs> like, the aesthetics of it kind of yeah. reminds me of Twilight. I've been saying is it. Is there a and... werewolf in this one? Because Ez is going to prefer him. Stop. Well, he's a fox. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean just, you know, that he's good looking. He's legit a fox. Does he yeah. actually shift into... No, I don't no. think so. You see that his eyes change, though. His eyes and then... change. And, like, he has, like, outlines of, like, nine tails. The guy's really hot. It oh, has yeah. To be said. He is. I love him. If you've watched Goblin, which is another Korean drama, you you know this guy. He is just fine. I love him. 
And like I wasn't digging the red hair before, but now I'm kind of digging the red hair. I really like it on him. Yeah. Same. There's a YA book that has that same nine-tailed fox, uh, like, myth. Really? It's a girl. Yeah, I'm trying to find it because just in case anyone's interested. Um, they have um, quite a bit of Korean dramas that um, focus on the nine-tailed fox. Like, I remember I watched one um, way, like, when I first started Korean dramas. And, like, that one was really good. And then I forgot what it was called, though. I think story of the Gungio. I don't even know how you say it. But there's that one and then there's another one. And then there's just so many. But this one I feel like is different because I love reincarnation. Like it's a trope that I'm obsessed with. I think we know this by now. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so like, yeah, I love it. And they seem like they're going to be cute. So we'll see. I think, like, I would want to watch Korean dramas and Chinese dramas because of the mythology. Like, I yeah. just feel like there's so much mythology in those shows that I have, like, I've never researched Chinese mythology before, but I just feel like it would open up a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are getting some singing. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, the book is called Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, and it's a young adult fantasy novel where the oh. girl is a nine-tailed fox. Interesting. Going back to, like, you know, Chinese dramas as well as Korean dramas, I feel like they do such, like, such a good job of focusing on mythology and fantasy, and also Turkish shows. I feel like they do a good job of, like, enemies to lovers like they're not afraid mm. of making the female or even like you know a male fall in love with like a villain or an anti-hero or someone that isn't quote-unquote good and yeah it's like it's right up our alley so I think I mean, you that's should try. just eastern media versus western media it's just exactly so different and so refreshing sometimes to dabble into eastern oh, media yeah. as how are you liking the show though I mean, we only watched one episode, but I want to watch more. I mean, I'm intrigued. I, I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah. Looking forward to watching the next one. Okay. The next thing on my list, which I read recently and absolutely loved, is The House on the Cerulean Sea by uh, TJ Klune. Oh, yes. I did see that. You guys. So freaking adorable. I just, I was looking for something that was, like, whimsical and adorable and just, you know, would give you all the feels, like, all the good feels. And it was exactly that. Like, if, okay, the the way I can best describe it is if you've seen the movie um, Howl's Moving Castle. Mm-hmm. It feels like that in a weird way, even though it has nothing to do with it. But the story is, um, I don't actually remember the names of the characters, so you're going to have to excuse me on that front because <laughs> I'm the worst with na character names. But anyway, it's about this man who has this like job where he goes to orphanages of magical children and makes sure that you know they're being treated right or whatnot. And it's a very like how this place works it's like very there's a lot of rules and you have to follow them and like there's codes and like a manual of like what you need to know and the laws and whatever and he's very like you know making sure he does everything correctly and then he gets sent to this house on the Cerulean Sea <laughs> um where there's like the like the most um I guess, like, they consider them dangerous children. Essentially, the Antichrist <laughs> lives in that house. Oh. <laughs> and is in the body of a six-year-old or five-year-old that is absolutely called Lucy. Lucy is short for Lucifer. And Lucy is fucking adorable. <laughs> There's, like, a green blob that they're like, we don't really know what his species is but he's absolutely like he wants to be a bellhop like that's his dream <laughs> in life is to be a bellhop and then there's like um there's this a little girl who's like um a, a garden gnome and she has a beard and she <laughs> she's just absolutely adorable and there's like this 
weavern, wyvern, I never know how to say that word, but like, it's just the cutest freaking children you can think of. And then Lucifer is just like, Lucy is just like, you know, constantly acting like he's about to burn the world to the ground. <laughs> like, he's just a softy. <laughs> it's just so great. And it's a this amazing story of this man that, you know, thinks everything has to be by the rules. And then he's confronted with this family that's very not by the rules. And he learns to love these kids and he learns to love the man who runs this orphanage. And he realizes that, you know, maybe what he thought was right was not right, you know, and he wants to save these kids and save other kids and change the system. And it's just so wonderful. It Honestly, sounds very so wholesome. wonderful. And again, highly recommend the audiobook for this one because the narrator does different voices for all the kids. And again, it totally changes the personality of the kids. Like, I don't see how you could get what he's given you on paper mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. can't hear a voice. So, well, I mean, you can, but, like, you wouldn't be doing different voices in your head. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, he's just absolutely amazing. So, highly recommend this book. And it's children's literature, right? No, not at all. It's, really? It's M.M. It's a M T.J. Klune writes M.M. romance. Why did I think it was something else? <laughs> I don't I don't think there's sex in this book, so. I, can't I just feel like the cover, like, really made me think it was a children's book. I mean, okay, it feels like, it could feel like it. That's why I'm saying, like, it kind of felt like Howl's Moving Castle in the sense that it's very whimsical, like children's literature would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's very, like, you can picture what he's saying so vividly. That's absolutely amazing of him. Like, I don't know how he did it, but it was a movie in my head when I was reading wow. it. So, so in that way, it can kind of feel like children's lit, but it's definitely adult protagonists. Interesting. Okay. I don't so. know why for the longest time I kept thinking that you were talking about a children's book. No, no. Maybe just okay. because I mentioned Howl's Moving Castle. No, no, no. I think it's like the cover as well. Like, I feel like the oh. cover the made cover me think it was so a children's book. The cover is so cute. It's beautiful. I love the cover. Love it. it really is. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah. that was mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to reading, to reading that one. But I want to start it after I finish... Um, the Green Creek series. His Green Creek series. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to need something cute and sweet after reading the last book of that one. Fair warning, though. The chapters are very long. <laughs> are they really? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. we had that's, long that's chapters. The book that had, like, that's the book that had a chapter in audiobook that had, like, 72 minutes. Like, it what? was 72 minutes long. I was like, this is over an hour. What? Of audiobook, so I can't even imagine how long it is in the book. Is there breaks in the chapters? Well, there's, there's, that's what I don't understand about long chapters because it's like there's always breaks uh -huh, where they yeah. go from one scene to the next scene. So I'm like, why did you not just cut the chapter here and then start a new one? But it's yeah. like, no, let's just put it into one big ass chapter and torture the readers. Damn. No one likes long chapters, authors. If you're listening to this, please, I beg you. <laughs> I mean, like, for me, it depends on the situation. Like, if it's something that's intense and, like, something's happening and, like, having a chapter break will kind of take away the intensity, then make it maybe a longer chapter, at least in my perspective. But, like, if it's, like, just you're doing it just to do it, then maybe don't. But I feel like if it's something intense happening, then maybe a longer chapter could be needed. I think I think that chapter was like they go on a scavenger hunt through the woods or oh. something. <laughs> so it really wasn't high intensity. <laughs> and then they have like lunch at someone's house. So yeah. Anyway, okay. Adorable, adorable th stuff. What's next on your list, S? Um I don't know if I should do another show. Oh, I'm gonna do I'm doing another show. I did start the Bachelorette this <laughs> This, really i started yeah because i can't because i keep seeing a lot of the the girl the woman claire's like memes and tweets and stuff and yeah. like how ridiculous she is and i needed some drama i needed some yeah so i started in that i think they only so have chaotic. like two episodes out yeah and i feel like this one is like it's most chaotic 
It's yeah, because like she chooses the guy in like the first day. And yeah, then all right of away. And like she doesn't want to go on dates with any of the other guys. So I'm curious to see how her season ends and where it ends. I heard that they cut it short. They did, and then they um reportedly casted another girl to be the Bachelorette, Tasha. Um, so I'm curious to see what they're gonna do because like I was also watching an interview with Claire. Also, yes, I am a Bachelor slash Bachelorette fan. Um. Not a fan. I just like watching not the drama. <laughs> Could I just love watching less. the drama unfold. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm happy this isn't my life. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so basically, um, she had said, Claire, that she did the entirety of the season. But like, she wasn't really talking about what else was going on. But like, I'm curious to know and to see how she does the whole season if she already chooses the guy. Like, unless she does like the whole, because you have to meet the parents you got to, like, do the fantasy suite. He's got to meet her parents and, like, all that stuff. So I'm curious to see what's going on and, like, how quickly they do that. I'm just going to leave the chat for a couple minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all can discuss Bachelorette. (laughs) But, okay, so question. Did she really say that she finished the season? That's what she said. I was watching Entertainment Tonight (laughs) because my mom lives, like, on that at 7 o'clock to, like, 8 o'clock. That's yeah. what she watches, the Canadian and the American version. Yeah. And, like, um, that's what Claire says. She says she did the whole season. Really, Marge? Marge, come back. She really left the chat, you guys. She really left. What? Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> You're annoying. Okay. <laughs> We're done. Poor Ash is going to talk. I no. hijacked it. Sorry. No, we're, we're not done. We're still talking about it. Listen up, Marge. Listen up. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I love the drama of these shows. Yeah, it's like, it's good drama. Like, drama, yeah. like, I'm happy I'm not a part of. I feel like because I've studied <clears throat> um, media and especially those kinds of shows, I'm kind of jaded as far as like what it can do to someone like the participants like mentally what happens to those people and how they like they make sure that people are as drunk as possible for like entertainment and like people do things that they highly regret afterwards and people you know commit suicide because of it because of the fame if you will like quote unquote fame that's sometimes bad fame like you're not necessarily famous for the right reasons like yeah if you're if you become a meme on the internet because of what you did on on like the bachelorette for example like the repercussions of that mentally like I just because I I know about that because I've studied it it's just I'm so against (laughs) those shows but I can understand that it's very um easy to consume yes um i feel like a lot of it though is fake like a lot of it is scripted oh yeah and not only that show i feel like there's a lot of reality shows maybe all of them that are scripted um but at the same time you get hired because you know you 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 do the addition and then they're like oh you would be perfect for the bitch girl so yeah. then you get hired as the bitch girl. But the truth is, you're not really like that in real life. But then and most the people that watch the are. show doesn't know that. And exactly. so you, yeah. you, you know, go back to your own life and people treat you like you're a bitch. Mm-hmm. Which it's just, That's I have true. many thoughts. So I will stop. <laughs> <laughs> I will no, no, I not mean, go further. I'm curious to see about Claire, though. Like, I just, I'm, yeah. I'm curious what they do with her. So you have you like caught up? Like, have you watched all the episodes? It's there's only two. Well, I mean, on Hulu, yeah. there's only two. So I figured yeah. it was gonna be like at least four. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Just two. When they stop know. with her, I don't know. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm here for the drama. Yeah. Well, I feel like for me, I can't not do this and not <laughs> Turkish talk about shows. It. A Turkish <laughs> drama or a Turkish dizzy. So one that I'm really obsessed with now, and I recommend it to literally every person listening to this. Um, it's called Herjai, and it's my life. It is my soul. It is my everything. Um, so basically what it's about, it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet-esque. It's set up in the sense where um, they're warring families, like something had happened in the past that made them detest each other. Um, and so they have this lady had groomed her grandson up to be like her tool of revenge 
And all he's ever known is, like, he needs to get revenge on this guy that had raped his mom and killed her. And that happens to be the girl's dad in the show. And then, um, so the whole plot of it is he comes to, like, this town and he claims to not be, like, and he's literally, he just claims that he's someone else. Like, he's not from this familial clan opposing enemy line. And, like, he just comes and then he sees her and he's like, yep, I want to marry her. But we, like, we know in the background that there's something going on because he plans to, you know, get revenge on the family. So what happens is they fall in love, in quotations, and, like, (laughs) they get married. And the whole point of the show is, is that he gets revenge on the father by ruining his daughter, basically. And then... But we find out later on. So, like, he literally ruins her. And, like, all of, like, it's a small area. So they all know of, like, what had happened to her. She obviously slept with her husband. And, like, they threw her on the street. And it's just, like, it's insane. And poor girl. But then we find out that he's actually, he did love her. And it's, like, the show is about, like, revenge and, like, him trying to win her back. Despite all the bad things he's done. And, like, it sounds really dramatic, but, like, it is dramatic, but it's, like, good anti-hero stuff, good enemies to lovers, and, like, it's just, it's serving me all the tropes that I love. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, uh, now that you mentioned, um, there's a book that I recently read that kind of reminds me the way you explained. Really? Um, how you said that the grandma was raising her, 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 what, her grandkid to become... Yeah. To, to get revenge for for something for someone, yeah. Um, uh, what's her name? Jewel Jewel E. Ann has her new book, Out of Love. I think it's called. It kind of has something similar storyline to what you just explained. Really? Yeah. There's like revenge oh. and like um, and it and it's connected to her End of Days series. I think. Yeah, so I think there's there's like a connection, like there's like family history and like the kids, you know, years later, the kids are involved and they're paying for, you know, their parents' sins and the yeah. sin of the father. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, I, I, I like this idea and like the story. And I love that like Turkey, I, I already hit on it. Like they're not afraid to give you the story of the antihero. Like they're not afraid to give you that villain's romance. And, like, obviously this is just one, like, one situation, but, like, they have so many other shows that, like, deal with this type of, like, storyline. And it's just, like, it's so good. It, like, feeds my enemies to love her soul and, like, my dark romance soul. And it's just so beautiful. Like, I love it. (laughs) I get scared sometimes because Western media is so wrapped up into problematic culture that, like, everything must be called out. We cannot, like... yeah. The point of having things like enemies to lovers, while you can see why it could be pr- problematic in some cases, the point of having it is to make you ask questions. Yeah. It's to have you reflect on what it means to have people at war. And it's like, why are we at war to begin with? Love mm-hmm. will save the day. Why are we fighting over stupid ass things? Or like, I just, I think that, it's so much more than that and because of the whole problematic culture thing oftentimes it's like things get written off right away without just just because you know what I mean and it's like you can't even explain why something means something to you like why the appeal of the anti-hero or the appeal of the villain lover like Mm -hmm. what does it mean that we love these things it's like no you're actually a vile disgusting person because you like that but it's like I'm not one dimensional. I can love these things and also see why they would be problematic and exactly. also understand that fiction and reality are two completely separate things. Exactly. Yeah, and I feel like that's a lot of like like the situation and problems that arise from situations like this and like stories like this. But it's like as a consumer, we know. I mean, like I'd hope, you know, that we know that it's not Like, if this was happening in real life, for sure, I would not want this to happen to anyone that I love or care about. Like, 100%. I would not want someone to be in, like, an abusive relationship or, like, a situation where, like, they've been hurt numerous times. And, like, I think there's another show that does it really well is that, like, it's shedding light on, you know, abusive relationships. But, like, so 
I'll do a quick little synopsis. So this girl basically is arranged to marry. It's actually one of my favorite shows that I kept talking about how much I love the romance. Um, but it's like, so it was an arranged marriage and like she lived in that small like village area. But then um, as a child, she um, kind of was like uprooted and she was forced to live with like a richer family and she went to school and then her birth mother forces her to marry a guy from the village area. And so she marries him, they fall in love, and, like, he seems like the sweetest guy ever. But then as season two starts, you realize that there's more to him. Like, he's violent. He, like, obviously doesn't hurt her, but he has issues that she doesn't comprehend. And he has, like, she has things that are going on in her life that he can't comprehend. And, like, it makes her a really unsafe situation and a really, like, abusive situation. I think it's, like, again, going back to the idea of perspectives, like, it's just, like, I never would have thought he would become this character from season one. But, like, there's always these red flags that we choose to ignore. And, like, as a consumer, like, obviously I ignored those. But, I mean, it's just, like, it's like such a great way that they show his character change. And, like, it is a true story, and I didn't really know that <laughs> until, like, going in. Like, it's a true story of, like, a female that, like, broke out of an abusive relationship and lived a life. And, yeah, I just feel like... As an audience, it's our job to realize when things are problematic, but it's also still our job to enjoy media. And, like, I don't know. I just feel like unproblematic things oftentimes don't make you ask yourself enough questions. Mm -hmm. And don't make you, like, why do I like this? Why do I like this trope that I know is, like, wrong? You know, you know technically wrong, and I know yeah. I wouldn't want this in real life, but why is it that I enjoy this? And also... Why should I be shamed for enjoying this? I agree. I totally agree. Preach it, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the next thing on my list is a book that I literally just finished this morning. And uh, it's called Annie's Song by Katherine Anderson. Oh. It is my first Western romance. Right. Yes. I never thought I would be saying that. Western romances has just never been my thing, ever. This is such an interesting story, guys, because... So the female protagonist is, in the blurb, um, described as the town moron. Because everyone thinks she's insane, that she's stupid, that, like... And they use a very problematic word, retarded. Um, mm. So... This was written in, like, the, I think, 96, so, you know. Um, anyway, so everyone thinks that she's, you know, stupid, but actually she's just deaf, but people didn't know back then, and so it's, like, this whole story of, like, okay, let me try to make a better job of explaining this. So she gets raped by a guy. Aww. And gets pregnant from it. And the guy, the, the hero is the guy's brother. Because oh. he marries her knowing that she's pregnant with his brother's Wait, child. What, what book is this? Annie's Song. By? Catherine Anderson. Oh my gosh, I think I read this. <laughs> really? It's in my head. Okay, continue. Anyway, so... <laughs> It's just this so cute story of, like, at first he marries her thinking, like, she's kind of a child and he's not, he, he's, he's, he doesn't want to be interested and, like, eventually, like, he starts realizing that there's more to her than meets the eye and that, like, clearly what people think she is is not, it's not the right thing, like, it just doesn't fit and then eventually he realizes that she's just deaf and never has been given the words or like the ways to communicate with people yeah. so be everyone yeah. just assumed that she just didn't know how to like you couldn't communicate period um anyway and it's this lovely story where like he gives her instruments and she start, tr starts making music because she can hear some sounds um and it's just it was so adorable very long but so adorable like just Oh, I want to read this. He was so cute. What's his name? Wait. Alex. I actually didn't read that one. I thought okay. I did. I read her other series. Okay. Alex is so cute. He's definitely a softie. He's not at all like alpha or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's a, one of the soft ones. But his, just his love 
for her, for Annie, and just devotion, and just, he fights for her, and he fights against her parents, who kind of treated her badly, to be honest, but also, like, understands that she loves her parents, you know, even though they treated her badly, like, sometimes you just love people that treat you badly, that's that's just (laughs) how messy people are. Yeah. And then similarly, like, also her understanding that despite what his brother did to her, he still loves his brother, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it was so good. It is so good. No, this author, like, she doesn't um, shy away from writing situations like that. And, like, I remember I read her um, Comanche series. Like, it was with the, um, I I think it's, it's, yeah, like, indigenous male leads usually. Mm-hmm. And, like, the second book dealt with, like, the main girl being raped at 12 years old. And it's just, like, her love with, like, the man of the story and, like, how patient he was. And, like, just, like, the overall, like, she does such a good job of, like, writing these situations and, like, talking about them. But also, like, writing romances that are believable in, like, that setting. And, like, yeah. I don't know. It's hard to describe. But, like, they're heavy stories, but they're st- they still feel inspirational. Yeah. Like, all her life, she would go into the attic and, like, act act out a life. Like, she would try, like, she would, like, mouth the words that she still remembered or, like, mouth what she, because she's a very good lip reader, but she didn't know how to communicate in return. So, like, she's learned how to lip read. And so she would go in the attic and, like, hide and, like, say the words and, like, play around. Like, she had, like, with, like, teacups and stuff. And, like, he, he, he finds her in his attic doing that. And he's like, never again will this be a f- her fantasy world. I will make this her reality. And I was just like, oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, okay, now I really want to read it. I Like, her writing is so good. I love her writing. And I'm, I really want to read this one now. So, Aww. yeah. Love me some softy guys. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Yes, what's, what's next? I did start another Jessica Kane book. You're really into, like, the smut smut. <laughs> yeah. I love it, girl. I love you me. love your smut. We I all do. love our smut. Even, like, ridiculous smut, like... You've been, yeah, you've been reading a lot smut. of smut. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and they're short, too. I love these short books oh, that are girl, straight to the do. point, that are smutty. Yeah. have a little bit of a kink to them. Um... <laughs> This one is about a king that doesn't want to marry. Ooh. Like, he just doesn't want to marry. He had, he watched how his parents were while growing up. And, like, they kind of used him, like, as a weapon to get back at each other. So he kind of has, like, he just doesn't want to get married. He doesn't want to experience what his parents went through and, you know. Um and he's telling one of his best friends, like, no, I'm never going to get married, da 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 And then he sees, like, a dark-haired woman walk by. And he's, like, automatically, da, he's, da, in, da. Da, 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 automatically he's in love and he needs to, Famous to meet last her. Words. Yeah. And, like, he, he, he just falls in love. And um, he wants to have her as a mistress. And, oh yeah and she doesn't want that she controversial she, yeah so if she doesn't want that she is actually planning on joining like these kind of um games competitions that they have to find a husband um she's raising her two younger sisters and she's running out of money she needs help with her farm so she joins the competitions to find a husband but then comes across the king and he wants her as a mistress, but she doesn't want that. She wants to set a good example for her little sisters. Um, and then... And then smut for 30 pages. <laughs> and then smut... No, like, it's... I feel like this one isn't as... Smutty. I don't know. It's more It's more tasteful than her other... Hmm. I don't know. Like, it wasn't... It was, there's it was more different. Plot. <laughs> there's, I feel like there's a little bit more... It's yeah. like on um on uh, AO3, like the archives are of our own. Like you yeah. have the tags like plot without smut or yes, <laughs> like plot what plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this one was um no no I loved it. It was cute. It was it was a little filthy. It was it was good. Yeah. Love me some Jessica. Um, 
Well, I don't really have anything else besides, like, I I read a Raylo fanfic in, like, the longest time because I was just curious because I kept seeing the art pop up, and it was literally, like, Kylo as, like, Kylo Ren as, like, a Mothman. <laughs> don't even ask. Okay, Ooh, it was, like, it was the weirdest, like, okay, it was Monster Romance. We love a moth boy. Okay, yeah. well, you're going to love this one. Um, <laughs> this is just... Even not. Like, there's Ooh, a lot what? that's going on, and... <laughs> what? And moth like, the nuts? <laughs> Excuse me, do I need to research moth penises? Is no. this, like, a fact? <laughs> no, okay, but there was one thing that I was like, ooh, never mind. <laughs> and I learned what, it, like, um an ovipositor was. I'm not even probably pronouncing it right. A what? An ovipositor? What's that? <laughs> The hand gestures, everyone. <laughs> wait, 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 what? His member, his penis, can push out an egg. What? <laughs> Girl. <laughs> oh, heck no. I was like, what the hell am I reading? But I couldn't stop reading. Is that because that's what moths do? I think so. And I didn't know that going in, so that was my bad. <sighs> Nature is weird. <laughs> um. But anyways... um. Obviously, like, Ray can't fertilize the egg. Anyways, all to say that it was really, it was enjoyable, but I learned something new in the fanfic <laughs> world, which is that. I feel like we should keep a count of, like, weird, uh, how would you, how would you even explain that? Weird, uh, sexual situations? Like, yeah, I don't know. In, in, like, the animal kingdom, like, weird facts about like sex <laughs> for animals and insects and like all that jazz because we'll make sure to include it in the uh description so you know the title of it if you are curious about yes. a mothy kylo ren with you know eggs go ahead all right last on my list and i'll combine the two i guess last but not least is crescent city by Sarah oh, yeah. J. Mass. And also A Court of Silver Flames, just because I'm very excited about it. Oh, yeah. I just wanted See, that to was, mention that was it. my end. Thank oh. you. Oh, sorry. No, well, okay. it can be a combined We'll talk about end. it together. Yeah. Uh, Crescent City. I don't even know what to say. Um, I'll be brief because I think we want to try to make an episode on, mm -hmm. on Crescent City. Um, it's a tough book to get through. When they say you have to get to page 200, they are not lying. You have to get to page 200 and then the whole book changes. Um, but I really wasn't sure. And then it made me go through all the freaking emotions. I don't even want to make a blurb for this. Like, I don't want to say what it's about because, again, you'll hear about it eventually mm -hmm. on the podcast probably. But it made me go through all the emotions, including, uh, like, just anger. I was so angry at one point that I put the book down for a whole day and didn't touch it again. And then I had to cool off and then come back to it. <laughs> so I was, was going to ask like, if you finished it. Damn you. I did. But then I saw you posting about it. So I'm like, so you obviously finished it. Yeah. But then, oh God, like Sarah J. Mass is so fucking good at like those last 300 pages. She's so good at bringing everything back that you thought like oh, this is stupid why is this here and then she's like it's here for a reason yeah. <laughs> and you're like bawling your eyes out when it comes back and you're like of course oh my god <laughs> did you cry i cried <gasps> yeah a few times and wow. like it, like the the end of that book like i i get why some people are like boring blah blah, blah but honestly the end of that book makes the whole book because you're like I was so emotionally invested by that point and just it really just hit home <laughs> like all the emotions I was just like oh my god Aww. so now I'm really excited for book two, book two which is coming out in over a year so <laughs> has it been officially announced it's not coming out until 2022 um, I think like on the Bloomsbury website 2022 November November 2021. Oh, okay, okay. That's not that bad then. But that that's 376 days away. Something like that. So over a year. Okay. Who's counting though? Damn. I March. <laughs> March. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've Remember, fucking read the book now. Do you still do um, countdowns? Remember we used to do countdowns for each? I, I did. I started one yeah, after Crescent started? City. I was like, shit, I got to get back on my countdown game. Yeah. <laughs> do you have one for A Court of um, Silver yeah. Flames? Yeah. Yeah. It's Hunt and Bryce. They're not my favorite couple. I mean, I'm a rolling girl. When will yeah. I not be? But they're very cute. And also, I find that they're different from her other two couples. So that, okay. that, yeah. But reading the book in its entirety, can you say confidently that you think they're the end game or no? I am personally confident that they are. The way, without spoiling things, the yeah. way that this couple, I mean, you've read her other series. Yeah. You know the way she con- constructs the first romance and the second and final romance or like yeah. third and final romance. Like they're done differently and the way that she does Hunt and Bryce in this book, it feels to be like an endgame relationship according to mm. how she writes them. Okay. Did they have sex in this book? Is that a spoiler? Am I supposed to say something? <laughs> I mean, like, I would, I, I would, like, yeah, I want to know. I mean, unless S doesn't want to know. Okay, they, S? I mean, go ahead, say it. Okay, yes. they don't actually have sex in the book. They, they make out heavily. Okay. That's but fine. That's, I'm cool with that, because I'm like, well, at least I have something exciting to look forward to. Yeah, no, book of two. course. Plus, she said, like, book two is very very smutty apparently so yeah okay i'm fine with that no no, no. i because like i feel like what i know from the story like they both still have a lot of hang-ups and a lot of things going on so makes sense a court of silver flames there you go Nesta. i'm so excited like Cassian. i haven't been this excited about a book since like her last release in the throne of glass series obviously kingdom of ash i i i go through like it's like i i alternate between excitement and dread <laughs> like I just <laughs> and sometimes just the nervous. two are mixed <laughs> yeah because I feel yeah. like I've written so many theories in my head that like mm. I just like I don't know which route she's gonna take the story or which route she's gonna take these characters and I'm just like I'm nervous but I'm so excited that's something fun what's something you think is gonna happen I don't know like I mean realistically speaking I want the book to end with them together and like I've just like I just, like, I really, has it been confirmed that she's going to go to the Illyrian camp? Like, that she's going uh, there, for sure? It's, it, well, according to the end of Aquafast, yes. Like, okay. the first, like, it, 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 I'm pretty sure the first chapter of A Court of Silver Flames in, it is in Aquafast. Yeah. So, I'm excited for that, but I'm also really curious to see, like, her relationship with Feyre and Elaine as well. Like, I'm curious to see how, like, how that, if it does improve or if it doesn't, like, I mean, I think still think if she doesn't improve the relationship it's still realistic in the sense where like you know like yeah they share blood but like it doesn't mean that they have to be best friends (laughs) that sort of thing so like I'm curious to see if she like Sarah J Mass decides to reconcile them I don't know that's like one thing I think she will in this case she will eventually it's gonna take I feel like a long time one thing I'm expecting is Okay, so I want them to go to the Illyrian camp, and I want Nesta, I want Cassian to train Nesta as one of the Illyrian warriors, and for her to go through the trial that Ooh. Cass, as and Reese went through. That would like, be I cool. I want her to go through that, and for that to be, like, her journey to recovery, to be partly, like, physical, just, you know, being, like, broken down. Mm-hmm. physically and emotionally at the same time um like that's i i would like that that's my canon my my yeah. well i guess yeah my <laughs> mental canon until i've read the book <laughs> yeah do you have any theories us no nothing <laughs> you're just going and blind <laughs> i'm just uh, yeah i'm I, like I i'm really curious don't. to see like yeah. their relationship progression like yeah. Cassian and Nesta, because I feel I still feel like Cassian has a lot to go through, like mentally as well. Like he's dealt with a lot, but I feel like we've only really seen Nesta's struggle because obviously she's also been through a lot, and like it's causing her to be a different, like act differently with the people around her. And I'm just curious to see how they come together and how they let each other in again. Are they mates? 
Let's I, let's let's make a poll. Yes. Mates. Yes. Yes. Hands down. I think the reason why they haven't recognized it is that Nesta refuses it to like everything, like every ounce of her being rejects the mating idea yeah. and rejects being Faye. So I don't think until she accepts all of that, I think that's when it's going to kick it. What yes. if she's not, though? What if she... I think she's saying that at that point for As and Elaine. In Aquawar, um, that scene where Kaz is about to be killed by the king and Nesta runs to him and lays down on top of him and they say, if you go, I go. Like, this is the end. I, and I wish we had more time. Bitch, if you tell me that's not mates, I know Sarah G. Mass, all right? I know her. <laughs> <laughs> I know my shit. Yeah, I think they're mates. I think... Are we all as an Elaine shippers here? I am. Mm-hmm. So, oh! No, no, I'm not. No. <gasps> oh, what are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> like you're, hardcore you're Elaine Lucian and girl? Asriel? No. Well, you ship you Elaine then? and Lucian? <laughs> Lucian, so You yeah. only have two options I love here. Lucian. I love him. I love him. I love Lucian, so too, I'm, but I'm he more... love. I it's see Lucian with I don't know. We'll see. No, Vasa needs to be with Jerry. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay, fine. Lucian can be with an, uh, someone else. Reincarnated we'll mate, right? Cause yeah, this, exactly. Because this girl exactly. that died, she can... Reincarnation. Yeah. There you go. Seth and is I think happy. his lover that had died wasn't his mate, but maybe the reincarnated version of her is his mate. There you go. We'll Voila. Um, we'll but see. as Elaine, I will go down with that ship, and that's the non-mate ship yeah. of my dreams. And I don't, that's why I don't think um, Cassie and Anessa, like, that's why I think they are mates, because yeah. I think Sarah J. Mass is going to go down that route for Asriel and Elaine. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> but Lucian will have his story. I 100% agree, because I oh, just yeah. feel like he is such a prominent character, and, like, he is focused upon quite often in the series, that I don't see him just, like, fading to the back. But, I mean, we'll see. He's an interesting character just because he was sort of, he sort of walks that line of like, sometimes he does bad things just because he's stuck there. And sometimes he, like, you don't really know where he stands in in like things. So, interesting. I'm curious. And I have a question. Oh. If Sarah J. Mass decides to give Tamlin a book, how would you feel and would you read it? No. Maybe. Probably not. But no. Really? At this point... I don't care for him. Fuck him. The premise would have to be insane for me to be like, yeah. But he finds his mate. When in case he finds his mate, and then he... It's it's Tamlin the tool, though. Like I know. Okay. She... So this is how I looked at it. Um, I would read his book because, one, I hated Kale, like, so much. Like, I, I don't know why I hated his character. But Kale but I wasn't read his abusive... Book, Kale? Yeah. Kale wasn't abusive. The he was an asshole. asshole. He treated Kale Aiden was like an asshole, but he assholes. wasn't abusive. He was, okay, fine. He wasn't abusive, but, like, his, he wasn't the greatest guy. And, like, he chose, like, as Dorian said, he chose pieces of her to love. And, like, it just caused for a really toxic environment and toxic relationship, obviously. And, like, I didn't like his character. I, I By the end of Queen of Shadows, I was like, uh-uh, I don't care. I wasn't going to read it, and then I obviously read it, and I fell in love with Kale, and I fell in love with a whole new set of characters. So I'm curious to see if she gives Tamlin a book, but if she gives Tamlin a book, I'm curious to see, like, his recognition of, like, what a mate could be, and, like, how much he's made Feyre suffer. I'm curious to see if, like, because Sarah J. Mass will redeem him in some sort of way. Like, she'll make him recognize his wrongdoing. I mean, she kind of already did. She did in Aquawar. But, like, not to, like, the extent where I'm like, oh, you know what? Tamlin's not that bad of a guy. I still want him to I eat just, shit. Okay, personally, my reasoning is that there's just so many other people and couples that I would rather hear about. Like, that couple from the past. Like, what, yeah. was, uh, what was the names? Marion and, and, and Dracon or something. I want yeah. their story that I'm like, if I have to choose between Tamlin and them... There's no question in my mind. No, like, of course. Of course. But I'm just saying, if Sarah J. Mass were to decide, I'm going to give Tamlin know. another go, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, cancel it right away. I'd still be like, all right, I'll see what he has to say, and if I agree with it, and if I could possibly like him. But that's it. 
I, right Honestly, now, I'm on. I'm like with you guys. I think he needs to die a miserable death and eat the worst type of shit ever. What she should have done is like a villain love story between Tamlin and Amarantha. But there's that theory that Amarantha was his mate. Like there's so many people see? that believe that. See. I would have I honestly if she had gone down the route of like these people are actually fucked up messed up pe- people but here's their love story I I would have read it Yeah I don't know we'll see we'll see At Nate who Is all this right. all I hope this ex- episode was entertaining We're ending on Tamlin like <laughs> okay fine let's end on Nessie I'm just dying to find out what was in the box. Uh, uh, me the too. And Sarah J. Mass said we're going to find out. River. It's in the book. It, she said that it. she put it in the book. So we will find out. But I'm, I'm just like, like dying to know. That seed broke my heart. Did you guys see that Twitter theory? Yes. Um, about the. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was a siphon yeah. or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. For I Nesta to control her powers. <laughs> Why do I feel like Cassian is going to be, like, the sweetest guy? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we can end. This is good. <laughs> I'm okay. back to being happy. <laughs> okay. I'm not oh, ending happy. Right. I'm ending like I'm sad because I'm remembering that scene of him throwing it into the water and, like, him being all sad and, like, messed up being an absolute mess. She, like, it's so heartbreaking. I felt so bad for Nesta at the end of that story. Can I just say that I find it really, it pisses me off that so many people just write her off as, like, a, the bitch when it's clear to me that she's a, she's in distress. This is depression. She's, she's going showing so signs of depression things. in ways that are different than Farah or whatever because the truth is we don't live depression the same way. Exactly. And for her, it's pushing everyone out of her life destroying herself hurting herself and hurting others because that's how sabotaging she deals with relationships it. yeah like, and it just pisses me off that as soon as depression doesn't look like what people want it to look like it's like she's just a bitch and it's like she's not but i think and it's because it has to do with i think it's because the way she was a bitch to her to Feyre when they were human she w- yeah you know, and I think that 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 carries on. I feel like it carried on. That left a big impression on people, and it carried on to her becoming, a you know, becoming Faye. And yeah, sure. But I have sisters. We've been absolute bitches to each other growing yeah, up. Yeah. We've been cruel to each other in some cases, and exactly. I still would want my sisters to be happy. And I hope that they mm. <laughs> they want me to be happy too. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I don't hold it against them. So it's just to me, if she was to leave it like that, I just, I just listen. Support women. Women deserve happiness. They deserve happily ever afters. God yeah. knows we go through shit in life. So I just I don't agree with the bitch. Uh, you know, sticker that everyone wants to put on her. And, like, I'm not just trying to paint Nesta as, like, you know, a great female because, you know, she has flaws like everyone else. But, like, yeah. who's to say she wasn't going through a lot of things back then, too? Like, we don't know anything, really, of her life as a human. We, like, we don't even know really much about Elaine. We only knew that she was engaged to a human, and then, obviously, she became a fey person. And, like, that's all we really know. We don't really know what Nesta internally was going through in mm. that village. So, I mean... A lot of things, like, everything's not black and white, and we all would know that. So I think being in her head, in her bo- own book, I think will be, hopefully, it'll change people's opinions on her. Plus, messy people are always more interesting. Of anyway, course. we need to end now, because yeah, we're getting too long. going to die, <laughs> Just, and we've been going on like, for an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> I feel like this is our, one of our longest. This is just going to be a chit-chatty episode, everyone. Well, this ha- this is what happens when we're just being chit-chatty. This is when all of us have be like, all of us are chit-chatty. It's just, <laughs> we just don't stop. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. The plan is to do one of these every, like, couple episodes, like four or five episodes or whatnot, just to mix things up so that it's not always the same format and you can catch up if you've been reading along with us, which you don't have to, but it's fun. (laughs) Um, Next week, what are we... I don't even know. 
I don't where even know anymore. Where, 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 where is this know. coming out? I don't know. Like, you'll find out what we're reading next week um, on social media. Just, you can find us on um, Twitter at the RTM Pod and on Instagram at Romance and the Monsters Podcast. You can also find me at Foes and Lovers on both Twitter and Instagram. You can find me as on Twitter and on Instagram at But This Book. And you can find me, Saf, on both Twitter and Instagram at Pros with Blows. All right. This is it. See you <laughs> next week, hopefully. Hopefully and you uh, uh, enjoyed us talking for so long about <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I honestly forget sometimes that we're recording these. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just too. like chatting with my friends. So. <laughs> uh, anyway. All right. Bye. Bye.